Hello everybody and welcome to English Grammar with Amaya sir. Uh, a warm welcome. And uh, this is a very special video because it's the first for the ninth standard. I'm talking about the state board here and uh, it is time that we start. So this will be the unit 1.1 that I'm going to present. This is exclusively for the ninth standard. I'm, I'm talking again, I'll say I'm talking about the SSC board, the state board, ninth standard English medium, the higher level. We are going to study the poem life unit 1.1 so i'm sure that you will enjoy and uh, have your notepad ready before i actually begin uh, doing the poem there is uh, something that i wanted to share with everybody not just the ninth standard but everybody in general i have received a lot of uh, interesting feedbacks some on email one on the comments uh, when i give the lecture some students insist that I use Hindi and here is one such comment I would definitely like to share with you. This is of course the channel. We are almost approaching 2000 subscribers now and this is the feedback I'm talking about. Binay Jha a week ago has mentioned that of course there, there are flaws in English but I think we can understand what Binay Jha is trying to say says you are exclusive and i must say you are an old hand than me which means more experienced than me so i believe that Bina is also some kind of a teacher or a mentor because he's appreciating that i seem to be more experienced than him but by still a suggestion i think it's but but i still want to give a suggestion the way you are explaining is superior but uh, if you will comprehend and understand us by using the language hindi then the people will understand rapidly best of luck bro i wish it million subscribers get soon so of course this this error in the english usage here but uh, all i'm saying guys is it's important uh, a feedback for me but now i'm going to clarify on that why is it that i use english and not hindi there are a lot of students who tell me sir please use hindi or uh, even people tell me use marathi uh, but that will not be so useful. If you appreciate my experience, understand this, that if I use Hindi or if I use Marathi, I am a, a Maharashtrian, so it is my mother tongue. But still, as an English teacher, believe my experience. If I use Hindi, you would not learn the continuity. People don't become fluent. People will not be able to comprehend using the language as a medium and uh, the teacher shouldn't do that. I will try to make it as simple as possible but then using Hindi is uh, then then it becomes of it becomes a point there comes a point where you can you cannot decide what to do because then the students are so used to listening it to listening to it in English and then in Hindi that doesn't bring about the overall yes of course there's one thing I would accept if I use Hindi to explain you a lesson, there are chances that you might understand it a little better. There are chances, yes, sure. Especially if some uh, student from a remote place somewhere in the village of Maharashtra is watching this. Yes, sure, it does help. But at the same time, I cannot shy away from my second responsibility, which is to impart the knowledge of English language, the English language you must be able to use it as a medium of communication and uh, take a take this lecture for example this is a video for the ninth standard unit 1.1 english medium students so it is better i stick to english however there is one thing that i will do if there is a video which is in general in general uh, then i might occasionally use a line in hindi but uh, if you have given me that honor of having more experience, then trust my experience. When the teacher uses English, the students will learn that much better. Of course, I promise what I will do is I'll try to keep it as simple as I can so that the knowledge is uh, delivered. Enough said and thank you so much for the feedback. I just wanted to mention it in the video so that you know that I take it very seriously. I appreciate your uh, 
comment and also your wish that we get million subscribers thank you so much and uh, that is why i more often you know only use english while i'm explaining something all right so let's get started straight away guys we are going to start with unit 1.1 on your screens right now the name of the poem is life and it's written by charlotte bronte now she is a very uh, famous she was a very famous uh, poetess and i say was because she's no more with us let us learn more about the poetess charlotte bronte 1816 to 1855 now you can see why i'm saying that this poem is very uh, special or very interesting the thing is it's written by someone who lived for 39 years isn't it 39 it is 39 isn't it, isn't it? 1816 born right so uh, 26 36 46 and 56 39 years 39 years and for someone who lived only 39 years to write a poem life isn't that ironic or what so you will enjoy the reading the thoughts charlotte bronte was an english novelist and poet she wrote more than 200 poems in her short life i've already mentioned that she lived for 39 years the rhyme scheme is a b a b for all the stanzas except for the first stanza where it's a b c b i want to talk more about this uh, rhyme scheme the way you mention it some people uh, they there are there are two ways of doing this either you stick to the a and b or you proceed with c d e f g h so instead of a b c a b a b a b in the next one it could be c d c d and going on and on until it's g h g h or i j i j you can go on that is also a correct way of doing it but you can stick to a b a b as well there is no problem because every stanza can be treated separately you can do that for the first stanza it's different but uh, the other stanzas you will notice that it is a b a b for the first stanza it is a b c b all right then what else we know now that uh, her life is an example of how ironic life can be this is so important guys how ironic for someone to have lived 39 years and have a philosophy about life that goes to show how um, interesting this poem is going to be someone is sharing philosophy of life when they themselves did not have such a long life let us hear what charlotte bronte wants to share with us about the poem before that this is this information always is helpful for you to write uh, that one mark answer what is the tone of the poem or whether it's a free verse blank verse or the other details so the tone of the poem is motivational i repeat the tone of the poem is motivational it inspires us and makes us optimistic having a positive outlook that's the meaning of optimistic guys okay and the rhyme scheme is not uniform we've already uh, clarified that and remember what i said either you stick with a and b or you go on the letters uh, c d e f g h you can go on both are correct ways of doing it okay let us start with the poem these are, are the first four lines the first stanza let me read it as usual when i read it you will not do anything but provide me your undivided attention because what will happen is at the end of uh, the explanation i will give you a couple of minutes to jot down all the necessary notes okay let's start life believe is not a dream so dark as sages say oft a little morning rain foretells a pleasant day clearly let's see the rhyme scheme we talked about it this is the first stanza so dream let's call it a then say and day will rhyme so it's a b c b so the second line and the fourth line rhymes here now sages are the people known for their judgment the rishi munis is the colloquial term here in india sages wisdom 
they have a lot of wisdom wise people experienced people foretells that means predicts about future events is to foresee something yeah and the word off guys oft is the short for often often a little morning rain there's figures of speech here alliteration sages say sages say is alliteration because sound the sound s is repeated for a better poetic effect i want you to understand that morning rain is also an important part here okay morning rain is a metaphor why do i say it is metaphor is because the morning rain has been implicitly compared the word is implicitly guys okay implicitly compared with small problems minor inconveniences so implicitly is indirectly and that's why this figure of speech is metaphor so we have studied all that there is on this slide let me go ahead and start your countdown timer you'll get a couple of minutes and i will join you again at the end of these two minutes it is now that you can use your notepad to jot down all the things here enjoy the music in the background i'll be back soon Okay, so your time is up and I hope that you made a note of all the things. Before going further, let's uh, try to understand here what poet, poetess here is trying to convey. The first two lines itself communicate a positive sentiment. We've already seen this guys, that there is a lot of positive intent here. The meaning is that life is not as sad as some of the sages tell us. or they probably warn us that life is tough life is full of difficulties well it's not as dark as sages say and further the poet says that even if at the start there are a few difficult moments it foretells a pleasant day because only after hardships you gain success so don't be disappointed if there are some early setbacks it's only whatever happens is uh, for the good so always keep faith that things will unfold for the better let us now proceed to the next stanza and as seen earlier all the stanzas now will have the rhyme scheme a b a b so let me read it again stop doing anything else that you are doing don't be busy writing down stuff uh, again at the end of this explanation i will give you a couple of minutes to jot down the details let me read it sometimes there are clouds of gloom but these are transient all if the shower will make the roses bloom oh why lament its fall 
Let's try to understand the rhyme scheme. Gloom is line A. Bloom will again be A because it rhymes with the first one. All the second and the fourth line will rhyme. All false. It's A, B, A, B. Now, what is the meaning of the first, first line here? Sometimes there are clouds of gloom. Gloom is sadness. So, of course, sometimes there is this environment of sadness. And uh, these are transient. Now, the word transient is very important here. Gloom, as I said, is darkness, depression, moments of sadness. Transient means lasting for a short while. So, these moments of sadness, these minor setbacks are all temporary. The sadness is temporary. The difficulties don't stand forever. Of course, it depends on your efforts. And the last you have lament, which means express disappointment or regret. So the poet is saying that if these periods of sadness, these, these uh, phases of sadness are temporary, they're transient, and you know that eventually the roses will bloom, here it's not actually just the budding, it's not actually the transformation of a bud into a flower literally here. It means that life, whatever will unfold, life will bloom, it, everything will unfold and everything will uh, unfold for the better everything will be fit absolutely fit and fine um, here if that is the case the poet questions us why should we lament its fall so if such early morning drizzle or if these minor setbacks are only going to be temporary bringing name fame glory later on why should we express disappointment the word is lament I'm sure lament probably was new for you. There's one more thing important to discuss here. The figures of speech is interrogation because a question has been posed. You can see, oh, why lament its fall? The other thing here is the word its. <clears throat> clouds of gloom is metaphor. The clouds have been implicitly compared to be of sadness. We saw an example of metaphor in the last slide as well. And I was talking about the word its. Now, what is to be observed here is its can be written in two ways, I-T-S and I-T apostrophe S. They both mean different things. So, look at the example I've considered. The car was quite old and it had lost its shine. So, the shine of the car. So, the car had lost its shine. So, the option B is right. The car had lost its shine, shine of the car. If you put an apostrophe and then you write it down, it means it is or it has. So what will be a good example of that? Well, I can easily say a better example could be of IT apostrophe as it's Saturday today. So it's Saturday today. IT apostrophe S. So I'm saying it is Saturday today. Then you write IT apostrophe S. But when you are trying to say it, it's where you want to say belonging to it, then you don't write it with the apostrophe. Very nice point to be noted, guys. This one. Okay. Now I think we have covered up everything as far as this slide is concerned. So I'm going to start your countdown timer. You get a couple of minutes to jot down everything. Enjoy the music in the background. I'll be back in a couple of minutes.
Okay, I hope you are almost done. Last five seconds. And your time is up. All right. Um, one more thing, guys, I wanted to share is our lectures are for an hour. So most of the videos you will see while explaining something from the textbook, it's a perfect one hour lecture. If it's not necessary that you spare one hour at a stretch at one sitting. So you can divide it. You can watch it 15 minutes a day and cover it in four days or four sessions. You can do that. I've said this many a times because there are also people who send email to me about uh, the lecture being uh, a big one. Like the, it's quite, uh, the duration is quite long. So here is my advice, divide it into number of sessions and then finish it because I will uh, post a couple of videos every week. That is my rate. So then you have enough time to go through the entire video. It's not quintessential that you have to do everything in just one stroke. No, don't do that. Okay, whatever time you have. I think you're done with this. So let's get back to what we were doing. We were studying uh, the difference between its and its for now and I want you to go to the notepad here. What you see here is the difference between its and its. So observe this properly. ITS means belonging to it. I gave you the example of the car losing its uh, shine but I will give you one more example. Let's consider another example. The dog was wagging its tail. So observe how it, how it is. <laughs> observe its. The dog was wagging its tail. Very important. The tail belonging to the dog, right? One more example for its. By the way, when I said apostrophe S, it means it is, but it can also mean it has. So let's consider the example of it has. So it has been raining since morning. It has been raining since morning. I'm sure that these examples have taught you the difference between its and its. It is or it has and uh, without apostrophe it means belonging to it. All right, let's get back to the poem. We'll now proceed. Rapidly again, when I read, I've, I've just be started reading it. So don't do anything else. Give me your undivided attention, guys. Rapidly, merrily, life's sunny hours flit by. Gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. That's the word is cheerily, very important, cheerily. It's not cheerily, okay? This, this word here that you see is cheerily, it's not cheerily, cheerily. So what is the poet trying to say here? The poet is saying, the, the word flit means move swiftly and easily. So the poetess is saying that the sunny hours of life, which means the happy moments, very bright moments of life, they pass by rapidly, they pass through the, the moments, you know, they have the happy moments, so they pass by swiftly, they flit by, gratefully, cheerily, enjoy them as they fly. So the, you should enjoy the moment as they go. Uh, it's very important that you appreciate the goodness, you appreciate the value, appreciate the things that you are receiving and accordingly deal with it. What's there to study? I told you that this word is not cheerily but cheerily which means happily or optimistically. Life's sunny hours. Here it's a metaphor which means happy successful moments of life and therefore this is a metaphor. I want you to make a note of that. I'm going to now start your countdown timer a couple of minutes. I will be with you after the end of these two minutes.
final 10 seconds <clears throat> and your time is up and I hope that you have jotted down and of course the metaphor is implicit the word is implicit guys very important implicit comparison is indirect comparison that's metaphor if it's a direct comparison then it is a simile all right we are uh, what else are we going to study today by the way along with this poem we are going to do the critical appreciation so you will benefit from that and also some textual exercises that will follow there are a lot of assignments in the textbook i won't do all but there are quite a few that i will cover so that will definitely help you whatever remains shall be your homework okay let us continue with the poem for now we had uh, studied this in the last slide that, yeah now this one again stop doing your work pay attention what though death at times steps in and calls our best away? What though sorrow seems to win over hope a heavy sway? Guys, this word O apostrophe ER is over. One thing you should know is apostrophe is used to show the missing characters. For example, when you write isn't with the apostrophe, it's I S N O T. The missing letter O. So apostrophe shows the missing letters or missing characters. That's what it shows. So O apostrophe ER is over. Now here you would notice that the poetess has asked us two questions. There are, there are good terms for vocabulary as well. What though death at time steps in and calls our best away? Now, there are two questions, so it's interrogation. I want you to pay attention at the spelling of interrogation. It's I-N-T-E-R-R-O. It's I-N-T-E-R-R-O. Very important, guys. Even the scholars mess this up sometimes. They know the answer, but they end up writing single R. For the spelling error, you would lose half a mark. And it's not wise to concede marks, give the marks away carelessly when you know the answer a question has been posed that's why it's interrogation a couple of lines there are two questions also you would have noticed that sometimes the poetess is used capital letters this is purely for better stress and emphasis i repeat it is for better stress and emphasis because those convey important sentiments that's why now what is the poetess asking us here the poetess Poetus is asking us, what happens if death calls our best away? So what if death takes us away or our near and dear ones away? What if that happens? What if sometimes sorrow seems to win? You know, sometimes you feel that there is more sadness in life than happiness. What happens sometimes? We get the feeling. So these guys are the lines that convey a slightly negative idea. But of course, the poetess will come back very strong and tell us what actually she uh, likes and believes more. But yes, there are sometimes those feelings that we have that maybe in life we have more sorrow. Sorrow seems to be more than happiness. Well, in reality, it's never like that. I'm always of the opinion that if you look closely, your life always has more happiness than sadness. If you, if you disagree with me on this, ask yourself, the moments of sadness are just temporary. What happens later is only the sadness by remembering them. Understand my point. There is a big, there is a deep thought here. It's the right poem that we are doing, life. So understand this. What did I just say? The moment, the actual moment of tragedy is just that moment. Whatever you do later is that you remember it and create more sadness. I'll give you a good example. I always talk with examples. Let us say that as a kid, you had a, a pet dog as a kid. Now, you know that the lifespan of a dog is not as that of a human. So no matter how much, you know, you look after, you provide for the, the dog, he leaves you. The, the companionship is not forever so when as a kid you had a pet dog and unfortunately he 
he passed away or he died the point is that moment yes it is sad but does that mean that you will you will be sad forever shouldn't you adopt a new one yes so the sadness is temporary what happens later is that you remember and create more sadness so remember this for a fact that life is more of happiness and less of sadness unless you have this tendency to recollect whatever bad happened to you and then create more sadness actually there is not so much of sadness around you. anyway so these are the lines which convey a little sadness what if death takes our dear ones away number 1 number 2 what if sorrow seems to win so what do we do then so those are the questions and therefore uh, interrogation is the figure of speech what else do we have here sway is rule or influence and even this line death calls our best one away is euphemism now guys this one i am going to highlight because this is my favorite figure of speech that the poetess has used here euphemism e u p h e m i s m don't waste time copying or writing anything down right now i i have already clarified i'll give you a couple of minutes for it so let's talk about euphemism euphemism means expressing a harsh idea it's normally death in mild way in a mild way expressing harsh idea in a mild way is known as euphemism okay for example should i give you the example because there is the ex- there is an exercise based on this particular point i guess we will leave it until we get to that point we are going to do it but then there is an exercise exactly upon this point so let's um, go back to the poem and deal with that when it comes euphemism remember the meaning of euphemism is harsh idea expressed in mild words so what has happened here the harsh idea of death has been expressed in mild words death takes our best ones away so best ones away this is a gentle i uh, this is an idea of death gently put is it not so it's euphemism is there anything else here yes sorrow seems to win you can see that the sound s is repeated for a better poetic effect uh, and also also this is personification uh sorrow is given the human quality of winning guys sorrow is not a living entity so sorrow has been given the human quality of winning sorrow seems to win but also please make a note of this as alliteration guys sorrow and seems so this is also alliteration please make a note of that as well but i have made a note of personification here let's see yeah we can definitely start the countdown timer and i'll see you at the end of these 2 minutes
okay final few seconds and i'm sure you are done jotting it down properly your time is up so let's continue guys Whenever I give you the time to jot down, make sure that you utilize the time properly. The logic of giving you time is to make proper notes. I discourage you from writing something whilst I'm explaining. So you only get these two minutes to jot down everything that you see on the screen. I hope without failure, you have made a note of that sorrow seems alliteration example as well i have mentioned personification but it can be alliteration as well for the sound s being repeated time to proceed to the next one now stop everything else pay attention yet hope again elastic springs unconquered though she fell still buoyant are her golden wings still strong to bear us well Guys, notice again this H is capital. I have told you this. I have made this observation earlier as well. The poet has time and a poetess has time and again used such capital letters for stress or for emphasis. So, what are the things to study here? She fell. Now, guys, this is a very important observation. If you will have this, you should ask this. Okay, she fell. Now, whom are we talking about here? We are talking about hope. So the pronoun she has been used for hope. Now is hope a feminine gender? Well, certainly yes. I'm sure you have seen the movie Ant Man. So the lead actress, uh, the lead character was Hope, the daughter of the scientist. So hope can be uh, taken as a feminine entity. So the word, the pronoun she has been used for hope here. So hope is unconquered. You don't become hopeless. You remain hopeful, and it uh, bounces like an elastic spring. Okay, still buoyant are her golden wings. That's why, because hope is a feminine entity, her golden wings. We are talking about the golden wings of hope. And then, why are we saying there are the golden wings? The reason for that, I think, is that it's the undying spirit. The undying spirit. and we are also talking about the sunny moments full of sunshine that's also the golden shade is it not so there are a number of reasons why we can say that they are golden wings you can say that it's sunny and so it's bright that's why the, the poet has mentions it as golden wings also it's the undying spirit undying hope that's why you say it is golden wings okay so hope has Give, been given the quality of having wings. It's an in an in animate entity. Okay, what else is there to study here? Buoyant, the ability to bounce back and float. Remember buoyancy. This boy is not b o y guys. It's b u o y a n t. Buoyancy, buoyant, ability to bounce back and float. You would notice this is alliteration. The last line. the sound s is repeated for a better poetic effect still strong guys there is one more interesting observation here watch this watch this closely the third line and the fourth line they start with the same word still now whenever you have this kind of a same start yes it is repetition but there is a name for such kind of a repetition it is anaphora i'm going to take you to the notepad to understand this properly so we last time studied the example of its and its and now we are talking about anaphora okay a n a p h o r a anaphora the same word or phrase at the start okay that is anaphora the same word or phrase at the start this is known as anaphora i'm going to wait for some seconds for you to quickly jot this down okay normally we have the countdown timer but for this one i don't want to have a separate countdown timer just do it fast anaphora and why is it anaphora the same word in this case the word is still or sometimes it's a it's a similar phrase that reoccurs to introduce every line or maybe sometimes the first line of every stanza something like that that is known as anaphora anaphora is a part of the 
uh, reputation figures of speech because yes it is reputation is it not of course it is reputation the word still has been repeated but the way it is used is more as anaphora similarly if anaphora is something that has the same start then when the ending is the same then it is known as epistrophe i'm not going to go into that detail right now just for just fyi for your information it is epistrophe just remember that okay and now let's go back to the poem and study more we were yeah we are done with this i think it's better i give you a couple of minutes to make a note of all this i think one minute should be good for this because we actually uh, there are, you can see that there's not much to make a note of here so just a minute guys okay just one minute starting now <clears throat> just a minute guys because we have already seen what is anaphora and uh, there are not many things to jot down here another 35 seconds or and we'll continue Okay, so your time is up and we will continue with uh, our poem. This is the climax. So let me read again. Stop doing your work. Pay attention. Give me your undivided attention. Manfully, fearlessly, that means with full courage, the day of trial bear, for gloriously, victoriously can courage quell despair. Here the poetess is at the peak of being optimistic. the poetess is asking us to be full of courage to confront life to take problems in your stride and move forward because if you have courage courage can subdue courage can win courage can end courage can suppress despair all those things so the last line is exclamation but before that let us study this inversion as well the day of trial bear why why is that inversion because the words are not in the correct order the correct order should be bear the day of trial the day of trial bear that's the way the poetess has written and of course this is exclamation and along with that it's alliteration because you can see at the start this can and courage so the sound c which is more like the k sound is repeated for a better poetic effect another thing guys to note is that the spelling of exclamation doesn't have i uh, of course t i o n is the way it ends i'm talking about exclamation not having the i in between here so when you only use the word exclaim then you definitely have i but when you are saying exclamation then there is no i there so i'm saying e x c l a i m exclaim then you have the i but when it becomes exclamation then you don't write the i it's simply the way you see it here okay exclamation e x c l a m a t i o n strong emotions are expressed guys uh, there's one more thing quell means overcome quell means end and quell can also mean suppress guys i used another beautiful word while explaining this i used the word subdue to overpower to overcome to end to suppress to subdue so courage can win over despair despair is your hopelessness your state of despair your state of hopelessness if you have courage and that brings to my mind another point that i would like to discuss with you which is a a a, a single failed uh, what can you say a single failed attempt cannot be called failure often youngsters make this mistake as you grow you mature you understand life better but 
this is the right age that you start learning these things a single failed attempt cannot be called a total failure as long as you are determined to stand up rise again and make another effort this time even a better effort and if you succeed then ultimately it's success a single failed effort somewhere cannot be called failure the great example could be um, edison he conducted the experiment a thousand times before he could lit that bulb you know that right thomas edison it's a very famous example i'm sure i ain't the first one to tell you this 999 times he failed but he in an interview said that i discovered 999 times how a bulb does not glow look at the spirit look at the spirit i repeat a single failed attempt is not a failure come on rise make a better effort again eventually you will you can call it a failure if you have decided not to try anymore if you have given up if you have surrendered then you can call it a failure but if you are going to make yet another effort better effort with new newly found hope and energy then a single effort in fact they say failure is the stepping stone to success so as a youngster somebody who is a young student have all these things in your mind to help you to lead a better life that's why you have such lovely poems to study and a good teacher to explain anyway we will now start with the textual uh, exercises i have told you that i won't be doing all the exercises i'm not going to spoon feed you everything but yes there are a few that i will definitely cover and uh, let's do the critical appreciation first when uh, we do the critical appreciation i will read it out first and then i will give you about um, Two minutes, two minutes, maybe three minutes to copy everything uh, down. In fact, let us start the countdown timer right away. Is it not? That would be a great idea. So let me pull up the critical appreciation. Let me also start your countdown timer as I start reading it. So here you go. Your time is already started now. Let me read it, and you can jot it down as well simultaneously. Okay? So save time for us. The poem "Life" has been written by Sha Charlotte Bronte. The poem does not have a uniform rhyme scheme. The rhyme scheme is A B A B for all the stanzas except the first stanza where it is A B C B. The tone of the poem is motivational. It inspires us to lead our lives in an optimistic manner. It fills us with hope. The poem teaches us. that the moments of sadness despair hopelessness are transient that is they are temporary and they will pass we must have a positive outlook towards life and keep firm faith that courage can subdue despair my favorite line is still buoyant are her golden wings still strong to bear us well these lines explain what the power of hope is the poet poetess in this case guys the poetess has made use of a variety of figures of speech such as personification metaphor interrogation the one that is very notable is euphemism death calls our best away death is expressed in a mild way so you can make a note of all of these things i have uh, one more point to make you know you might have heard of actor as a unisexual word actor and actress is normally how you describe it but remember the word actor can stand for someone who acts it does not the gender does not matter similarly poet and poetess well someone who is a poet is poet so poet itself can stand for both but of course for further clarification you can write poetess which i i also have done at the introduction when i was introducing the poetess i've done that however just remember um, even in uh, film reviews or some other places in the indian film industry you might have heard of this actor is a general term actress is more precise for the feminine but you can use the word actor as common for both similarly poet common for both 
i am sure when i was reading it you have all you paid attention to the underlinings that i have done you got to underline important parts that helps the examiner understand the gist faster and increases uh, your chances of scoring a little higher than what the others would get because you made the examiner's work that much simpler another 10 seconds more and your time is up so we will proceed now to the next question from the textbook here is the question the question here is pick out from the poem two lines each that reflect an optimistic attitude and pessimistic that is negative attitude so let me do it for you here are the two optimistic lines i feel there could be some other lines you write but these are my favorite ones enjoy the sunny moments enjoy them as they fly so i've written sunny moments in the bracket because that is not exactly the line but enjoy them as they fly is the line the next one is still boy and tar her golden wings well that definitely is optimistic the line that refer to hope for the negative lines here are my suggestions the first one is sometimes there are clouds of gloom i told you that this is a typical negative slightly a pessimistic idea the poet says that yeah sometimes there are moments of sadness and remember my advice about being sad and happy there are definitely 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 more happen happy moments and there is more happiness in your life than you think the sadness is just temporary it is happiness that stays for longer time sadness is up to you if you want to remember those sad times and create further happiness okay so these are the two lines i have i don't think i should have a separate countdown timer for this guys sure i i don't i really don't feel that uh, there is a separate time control that uh, i should have for this so let's just quickly proceed to the next one you can always pause the video go back and write those lines now this is the next one that i feel i should do this was the one that uh, you know we were talking about remember there was this case of euphemism that i said that i wouldn't share it right away because there is a question about euphemism later to follow well this is that question that i was talking about so this is about euphemism what is the question here read the question very carefully and calls our best away is a gentle way of expressing an unpleasant idea or as i said a harsh idea for a loved one dying this is euphemism think and write they have asked us to think and write down three or four ways in which we can express the idea of death in a gentle manner in a mild way so i am going to provide you with those expressions the first is his body was very cold now what do you mean by his body was very cold obviously you are suggesting death here but in mild way the next one is he reached the gates of heaven when does someone reach the gates of heaven obviously we are referring to death here but we are expressing that harsh idea in a mild way i repeat we are expressing a harsh idea in a mild way otherwise there is no way that you are reaching the gates of heaven the third one is life went out of him gently now life went out of him gently is definitely euphemism again we are suggesting the harsh idea of death in a mild way and lastly i would say the journey of life ended so it looks like some station that you know your destination has arrived but of course you are talking about a journey of life ending here so we are again referring to death but in mild terms so these are my examples for euphemism again i would suggest that we shouldn't really have the um, separate countdown for this you can pause the video write them and then continue let us proceed to the next one this is one more textual exercise that i feel i should do the uh, textbook says listen carefully and write down the word they should say words in appropriate columns they have provided us with the words i don't know why they've mentioned just teacher maybe the teacher should read them out so these are the words and here i will definitely concede a couple of minutes guys i'm going to give you a couple of minutes for you to actually go ahead 
and uh, finish these. You have to fit them properly in uh, two columns provided. Your time has already started. So please do this and I will uh, reveal the answers after at the end of these two minutes. All right, final five seconds and your time is almost up and it's over. I hope that these are the things that you wrote. You can pause the video and then check and only then continue to the next thing. Okay, so the next one I want to do is this textual exercise. They want you to read the poem, the Psalm of Life. Pay attention to this word, guys, Psalm of Life. There is a silent P and there is a silent L in the spelling. Well, that's English for you. The spelling is five letters and then two of those letters are silent. <laughs> Psalm of life. And I'm going to provide you the poem or this is the poem. And uh, here you have the poet. The image is courtesy Wikipedia. Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. H.W. Longfellow as the textbook says. Read it at your leisure and enjoy this. Now the next is a textual assignment that is uh, what I actually found to be the most interesting. Let's do this. I realize that courage and hope can be uh, he can help me overcome any major mishap or problem in life. Write an episode of your experience from your own life that leads to the above conclusion. Guys, this is such a nice assignment. I actually like this. So they want you to write your own experience and how you realize that if you have hope, you can overcome your problems, you can overcome a difficult situation and emerge victorious. Now, this is your homework. However, I'm going to discuss and give you an idea of how you can do this. So here is my idea. I'll definitely share um, uh, the idea with you. Here is what you could do. Look at what I have provided here. Consider that you used to stammer while talking. That's the first point. You were mocked by friends, you were low on confidence. Then there was fear of social gatherings, fear of failure. You did not like meeting people, obviously, because your friends used to make fun of you. You were being mocked at. They looked at, they treated you, you know, very badly. Then this point, you resolved to overcome this. Guys, it's moving this way, okay? It's moving this way. So you resolved that you will do something about it. Then you made determined efforts and you received help from your teachers. And finally, you started speaking fluently. So this problem of stammering was completely resolved and you started speaking very fluently indeed. Now, I know what you're thinking. You must be thinking, sir, such questions, why do they ask? I mean, it's okay to write philosophy, but uh, in real life, does it happen? Well, here is a big surprise. The example that I gave you is applicable from a real life example. And I am going to 
definitely share the personality's name uh, with you. Very important, guys. I'm talking about none other than this personality. I'm talking about Ritik Roshan. The situation that I was talking about where you had a stammering problem, you know, you couldn't speak properly, but then Ritik Roshan also had this problem. He joined a therapy, speech therapy class. He worked hard and today, you know, he had a, a character that he played. He played the character of uh, Akbar, Emperor Akbar in the movie Joda Akbar. So the, the guy who used to stammer is here as a superstar and that's why always don't just dismiss my examples of so does it really happen like that you know it's difficult to believe all these are just things to write in the the, the exam well not really so these are real life examples i have no doubt that you actually love this this is a real life example and there are other examples as well but since rithik roshan is a celebrity I shared his example. Now, how to write it is your homework. I've just given you a nice idea of how to write it. Let's go back and bring this lecture to an end. There's this last question that I want to discuss, which is uh, creating an acrostic. So they have uh, done this acrostic. Uh, live in freedom ever. Liberty, integrity, fraternity, equality. And they want us to create an acrostic about life there could be n number of possibilities but i am going to share one of my um, ideas here you could go for this so you can say love intent focus and endurance basically what my idea is here um, is um, to tell you the recipe for success in my opinion you should have love they, they always say love what you do or you'll be forced to you know do what you love or you'll have to no do what you love or you'll be forced to love what you do the next one is intent there should be a strong intent why you do things there must be great focus if you want to achieve things and there must be endurance there must be this persistent then only persistence then only you can achieve whatever you want to achieve in life and uh, that's it thank you so much for joining me and i am sure that you enjoyed doing this poem there are a few more textual exercises i told you i'm not going to spoon feed you with everything but i've given you a nice idea enjoyed bringing this first lecture to you ninth standard and we will meet again soon and in the next lecture for ninth standard i'm going to deal with the lesson the necklace it's a very beautiful lesson up until that time do take care uh, and i'll meet you soon okay bye bye